It's only week two of the NFL, and already battles of titanic proportions across the league. Speaking of which, Colts at Titans battle a co-MVP. Could the Colts steal the W in Tennessee? Panthers at Chiefs. Which Super Bowl contender will start 0-2? Bronx at Jags. Does Jacksonville have the key to ground Denver's high-powered offense? Bears at Packers. Could an upset really be brewing in this rivalry on the tundra? Can the Seahawks really win two straight on the road? A very special day in Arizona. What better way to remember a hero than by hosting the Patriots? A Sunday full of surprises. Next, week two of NFL Prime Time. Is presented by Miller Lite. Prime time is Miller time. And now, here's your host, Chris Berman. And hello once again, everybody. Welcome to NFL Primetime. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, 18 years. We've been churning it out. And is the last week, last Sunday of summer already? Yeah. I just know that there's a big difference between what happened last Sunday and what happened this Sunday. Well, a little, a little tense because teams like. Teams like the Colts, we'll see them later, and like the Panthers and the Chiefs, right. it could start 0-2. Panthers, Chiefs playing at Arrowhead. Let's go right to that game. Two of the best teams in the NFL last year, and some of the best players, like Priest Holmes, by 13 regular season straight wins at home. Now, we know that Stephen Davis was hurt, and that meant Deshaun Foster was in replacing Davis. But daylight come, and you got a Delol. Look at Jake Delol. He ad libs this pass to Chris Mangum Force. Yeah, and Monty Bees will get the good shot on him right there. Can't get him on the ground. And I have no idea how Delol was able to spot Magnum he and get him the football. He has the big gift. You think at the one Priest Holmes might get? Yes, it's a touchdown. Priest Holmes touchdown. 10-7 the Chiefs. Now, third quarter, third and seven Panthers, much lower scoring game. DeLome. Well, that's Kerry Colbert, first NFL catcher. He would be Steve Smith's replacement. Now, later in the drive, we... <laughs> never mind. It's Colbert that catches his nine-yard touchdown, and it's 14-10, the Panthers. And so Colbert, coming in, the rookie, played at USC last year. 14-10 at 21-17, Panthers at Deshaun Foster. He could... Go just about all the <laughs> way. If Panthers have been around that long, it's the longest run in their team history, 71 yards inside the five. And then he did the work, give him the touchdown. And the Carolina Panthers give the Chiefs a rare home loss. Their only loss last year at almost in the playoffs of the Colts. 28 to 17, Carolina wins it. Foster at 174 yards. Three touchdown passes for DeLome. Carolina had the ball for 35 minutes in this game. And now this chief offense, A, was shut down by Carolina. B, Tommy, look, they they got to play some defense, Kansas City, or they're going to be in a lot of trouble. I know they won without a great defense or without even a good defense last year, but I think it's catching up to them. Do you well, agree? Kansas City had their problems for the second week of this season, but I want to give credit to this Carolina mm -hmm, offense. Mm -hmm. They went in that stadium without Stephen Davis, with an offensive line that's just really beginning to feel some cohesion. No Steve Smith, and they did it by running the football and attacking with the lead. That's Brad Hoover in the circle. He's going to lead on Monty Diesel right there. This is a backup middle linebacker. Once he controls him, Deshaun Foster going to make the cut right off of there, get to the outside, and get good yardage. Same thing again. You've got Brad Hoover on the lead. He's going to be looking for Monty Diesel. Control the middle linebacker. Make the cut off of him. And there you see he's through the hole for a 71-yard run. And when you talk about that time of possession that Boom just talked about, that's all about 176 yards rushing for Deshaun Foster. That's what gave him time of possession. That helps them both ways, offensively, defensively as well. The Chiefs, look, coming from behind, look, they obviously have the offense to do it, but, but they don't have... You pointed at that earlier when we were discussing it, right? Yeah. They don't have the, the kind of wide They don't have the kind of wide outs where if they have to make up 10, 14 points, they're going to be able to do what the Indianapolis Colts do. You're going to have to go down and run Priest Holmes, control the football, and play action pass off of and it. And Carolina, so resilient on the road last year. This is a team on the ropes. They go into their bye week at 1-1 one one with a win at Arrowhead, not 0-2, oh and, and wondering if they'll get back. A big win for the Carolina Panthers when we return. Well, they lost, of course, to Brett, to Brett Favre and the Packers. Pack at home against the Bears, so this would be a laugh, right? Uh, well, depends which side you want to laugh on. 
Deion Sanders playing some D, returning some punts until he got hurt. But the Ravens trying to get off the schneid against Pittsburgh. And Mike Vick in the Falcons' home opener against the St. Louis Rams, a team that had beaten seven straight times. Would they end it? NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. Grab yourself a great-tasting, low-carb Miller Lite. And in part by TheNewCircuitCity.com. Log on today for your chance to win a plasma TV makeover. And Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. Get ready for the game. Welcome back to NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. 2002 draft, David Carr picked first overall by Houston and picked third overall Joey Harrington by Detroit. First time they would play against each other as pros. Lions lead 7-3 in the third. Harrington, Roy Williams, their first round draft pick. How about this play as Harrington and Williams, they've got something going already. Yeah, this is cover one, three deep. You see the three deep guys going right there. You're covering the third. The safety in the corner going to make a break on the ball. And Roy Williams makes this looks so effortless. He does. He just does something, he does it, and it looks really easy. Well, Carr has his young target from last year, Jeff, and that's Andre Johnson. 54 yards, and now it's a 14-10 Detroit lead. Houston back in it. But last week we saw Dre Bly on the Detroit special teams. This time, Eddie Janitor in at Drummond. Got behind the wall, kicker with no angle, and he could go all the Way nice block down to Springer for the last 10 yards. Detroit special teams, youthful exuberance and paying off there. 21-10 Detroit. Now fourth quarter. Watch David Carr. Whoop, whoop. And somehow he throws it, and this finds Bradford for 27 yards. They go for two minutes at 21-16. Under five minutes to go in the game. I want you to watch Roy Williams here. <laughs> Whoa, Nelly! 14 yards, Harrington to Williams, touchdown! You know, take another look oh. and realize he's used to getting one foot inbound in college. Now it's two feet. He seems to have picked it up, boom. Ladies and gentlemen, the Detroit Lions are 2-0. and oh. They beat Houston 28-16. to The Williams caught just the four balls, but you saw the two for the touchdown. So a good show put on by Harrington and Carr. The Lions, I'm telling you, they're going somewhere. They are. 49ers at the Saints. Now, New Orleans, their second home game lost last week. San Francisco had to start Ken Dorsey. He had the scintillating mark at the University of Miami and a one national championship. First quarter, Niners knocked Deuce McAllister out of the game after it's a fumble. They get on the ball, sprained right ankle, MRI tomorrow on Deuce. The Niners can play some defense now. They do have some defensive players, even though some of their starters were hurt. 10-3 Saints second quarter. Kevin Barlow shifts fields, gets a little block, touchdown. 10-yard run, ties it at 10. Now with seven minutes to go, we're up to 23-20 Saints. Jamal Robertson, one-yard run. The Niners seeking upset, lead 27-23. Later in the fourth, Niners trying to just pick up yards and run. Oh, with the fumble. And Jay Bellamy, one of the Bellamy brothers, lets his love show. And... The Saints are in business. Minutes to go. Down 27-23. Aaron Brooks. Dante Stallworth. 30-27. But we're not done. Because Ken Dorsey, he wins. And so the Niners have this little screen pass to Terry Jackson, one of Tom's cousins. And look at this one go. To the 20, 15, 10, 5. The Niners in business. But a flag on the play, Tom. Offensive pass interference on Brandon Lloyd. And you won't be able to see the other part of this pass, but Brandon Lloyd goes out and evidently engaged the corner as the ball was in the air before it was caught. You know it was close. You know it was a close play at the judgment call on the part of the official. Tight, tight call. Tough call to make there. And then Dorsey just hoping with seconds left. And it's picked off by Ashley. Ashley Ambrose on his way to Terra. So the Niners game twice against the Falcons yes. and Saints, but 0 and 2, and the Saints tiptoe through and win it 30 to 27. As uh, but you know, gain in the game by San Francisco. Stallworth caught nine, 
Boring eight. Curtis Conway eight for San Francisco. And, and you look at the numbers for Aaron Brooks, and I think this is the way that Aaron Brooks can play. 25 of 34, 279, and three touchdowns, taking advantage of all those Saints weapons. Well, four games involving teams that were 1-0, and oh, Tom, and that includes this one, Denver and Jacksonville, and Jacksonville's home opener. Denver figuring, let's get used to the surroundings in case we're there for the Super Bowl, but... Ernest Wilford, remember, left which hit him with the winner last week against Buffalo. He did it again. The rookie from Virginia Tech at 7-0 Jacksonville. Quentin Griffin not running against the Chiefs today. Jags defense tough. That's Marcus Stroud. Meanwhile, Jake Plummer decides with the right hand today. Swings it to Griffin. And look at the Jags D swarm. They, they play that D now. Swarming defense, good front seven. Everybody knows what their assignments are, and they trust each other defensively. Champ Bailey on offense. Out, and if he's not longer the champ, he's down to the seventh-ranked contender. He drops the ball, 220 to go. Third and four. Jake Plummer, Darius Watts. Uh-uh. Hold on now. A blow to the head by Lionel Barnes, and so the drive continues. And, and even though it wasn't a hard blow, a it call. was, in fact, a blow to the head of the quarterback, and you can't do it in this league. It's going to be called. So, look, the Broncos trying to clean it at 7-6, but meanwhile, Plummer to Nate Jackson, one of Tommy's third cousins. They're in field goal range. You know Jason Elam can kick him from anywhere, and on third and eight, the Broncos sitting up Elam, but... It, it, it either Griffin never got it or Plummer never got it to him, right? It's a fumble, and the Jags have the ball. You take another look at the handoff. It looks like Jake gets the ball up to his depth, but for some reason, they don't handle the exchange. And again, we talk about it all the time. You can't have a fumble down in that position when you've got a chance to score. So the Jaguars win it 7-6. to six. So they win 13-10 and 7-6, but they're the team that's 2-0. and oh. And by the way, that makes 17 straight games. They have not allowed a rusher to run for 100 yards, including Quentin Griffin on this day. And boy, they beat Buffalo and they beat Denver. Kind of like for you, Jag fans, 96. Those two teams they beat in the playoffs on that. And, 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 and you mentioned that while we were watching the film, thinking all the way back to last year, very Panther-like these first yes. day games. We just throw it out there. Yes, from last yes. Year. An unknown Sun Belt team kind of winning these tight games. When we return, Clinton Portis, the other half of that trade, how would he do with the Redskins if the G-Men and a battle of co-MVPs, Steve McNair against Peyton Manning, Titans Colts in our prime cut of week two. We'll be back. Inside the Numbers, brought to you by Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. Get ready for the game. Well, it's certainly been fun for Brett Favre, especially when he plays the oldest rivalry in the book, the Packers against the Bears. He's 20-4 and four against them. They've won the last seven meetings. Even Lovey Smith, the new Bears coach, says it's not a rivalry until That's we true. uphold our part of the bargain and at least get close or beat them a couple of times. So with all those numbers, and as good as the Packers looked on Monday night, and the Bears still trying to sort out the new regime, and we're at Lambeau Field for the Packers home opener, this was going to be easy, Packers. That's why they play the game. Here we go from Lambeau Field, and they played a lot of them at Lambeau Field. I love that. 168 times the Packers and the Bears have played. Amon Green gets a hand of a look at Brett, make a block here on Mike Brown to help Green get 35 yards. Looks like he's off to another big game, Tom. You know what? Want to know what makes Brett Favre special? You know, he doesn't get Mike Brown down on the ground, but the fact that he goes out there and throws his body around and tries to make that block. All right, special. Now here is. Uh, Mike Green picking off just and Brett will air it out. You figure, ah, all right, Mike Green picked it off down at the six, a long punt of a Brett. Obviously a touchdown to my dad. Favre in the second quarter, hands to Amon Green. It's a bubble, and instead of going in, it's Mike Brown. And how many times have we seen him around the ball for big plays? He could go all the way. 95 yards a second, longest bubble return in Bears history. George Hallis, 98 yards, 1923 against the Oorang Indians. Tom played in that game. Yeah, Brian Erlacher forcing the fumble, sees it picked up by Brown. Look at him throw the block on Brett Favre to get it all started. You don't go 94 until you go to first 15. That's a great play by Brian Erlacher. Meanwhile, Thomas Jones is going to run. Look at him go. 54 yards until he's dragged down by Mike McKenzie. It's, he's back in the action, but Jones touched him, made it 21-3 Chicago. Then far to Robert Ferguson, not so fast. Late third, Pack making a rally, 21-10. But still the score, late fourth, fourth and eighth. Watch again, Brian Erlacher roaming. 
Buster gets to Favre and the precious tried it. Whip! And the Chicago Bears, in a huge upset, go into Lambeau Field and beat the Green Bay Packers 21-10. Jones with 152 yards rushing, and despite the and the Bears, despite the fact they were a game by 100 yards, they got the big plays this time from Mike Brown and Mike Green. Whatever color you wanted, it was the Bears upholding their end of the bargain. Yeah, we've seen a lot of it the first two weeks of the season. Turnovers close to the other team's goal line. That's a 14-point yep. turnaround. That's the key to that game. And they, you know, running. This was something the Bears did. Now, what did they, what did they expose the Packers on? Well, we talked about interior run right. offense. When we talked about Carolina, we're talking about interior rush offense as we talk about the Chicago Bears as well. You want to establish the run, control the tempo of the game. They were able to do that. Thomas Jones was going to be the guy in, in the spotlight here. You look at the line, you get the guard pull. We talked about it this morning on primetime. Six hole, a lot of ways to get to it here to pulling guard. He makes that cut off that block, and he is off to the races. Drug down on about the 16-yard line. Again, out of the eye formation. This is a run formation. Again, weak side down at the bottom of your screen. Slot open is what you're looking at. Again, you get the pull. They attack again the other way. Six hole, if you will, makes the cutoff of it back inside, going straight downhill, what we call a straight line runner, uh, running downhill. You know, it's, it's, it's the way you attack a defense and you, you give them the most punishment. And congratulations to Lovey Smith for oh, his yes, first win yes, as an yes. NFL head coach. Moore had his last week, and now the only one left to see is Mike Malarkey, the guys who have never yeah. coached head coach before. Well, this guy's had a couple of wins. It, and so is he, but I'm talking about Joe Gibbs, Redskins into the Meadowlands to face Tom Coughlin. A little griping, but you know what? The Giants were there way early for everything. <laughs> Mark Brunel sacked by Fred Robinson. Michael Strahan arrives in the pocket seven minutes early, and they have the football. <laughs> Next play of the Giants. Kurt Warner looked good today, Tom, huh? He throws deep for Tim Carter. The side. Touchdown. Warner, 22 of 33. No picks. But turnovers, well, it was it was a bakery for the Redskins. Clinton Portis is a fumble. Barrett Green had the tie on for the meeting and a touchdown. The Giants lead 14-7 on the 16-yard fumble recovery. Then more Giants defense. Four with a swarming Mark Brunel. Tricky Redskins, but forget about it. Tip and pick by the big fella, Fred Robbins. One of 31 flavors, Baskin and Robbins. Third turnovers for the Skins. Yeah, great job of tipping the ball, bringing it down, getting the interception. Quarterbacks have to understand there are times to eat the football. You don't want to throw it up for grabs, especially in your own territory. And then Brunel came up limping. He's day-to-day. -day. Skins don't play their next Monday night. Leaves with a left hamstring injury. So the Skins are down 20-7. to And Patrick Ramsey, who's a, who's a good one, throws it deep to Rod Gardner. Woo! Nice, 51 yards. So the Redskins maybe still feel despite the turnovers they're in business. Ramsey throws to the corner, but Brent Alexander is there. Again, the Giants early on double coverage. Still 20 to 7. Portis running. And it's gonna be a fumble. OCU Minori picks it up. Five turnovers for the Skins. Now it's 20 to 14. Gibril Wilson, rookie, picks off Ramsey. Six turnovers, and then Brent Alexander makes another pick. Seven turnovers. Oh, by the way, also four sacks turned in by the Giants defense. You know what? I told you on, on countdown, they're going to return the opening kick at 12.55 and get a jump. They were all getting a jump on the Redskins all day long. And boy, Joe Gibbs hadn't lost a game in 12 years. He finally lost one. Giants, 20 to 14. And it, in a puzzler, and I think Warner looked good. That's the well, I, I think that's the key that you take away from this game. We, we, we've seen Kurt Warner. We haven't seen him play well for a long time. He stepped up in the pocket today and threw the ball awfully well. And the Giants win it, and they end in one of one. When we return, Dion against the Steelers. Could the Ravens win their home opener? And talk about electricity. How about Mike Vick? Falcons looking to go 2-0 and if they can against the Rams. Team that they hadn't beaten seven straight times. We'll be back. Steelers, Ravens, and uh, Dion and Ray Lewis ready. We knew we don't like that other side. We don't like nothing better. 
I don't like nothing about the people over there. Nothing. Nothing. Well, the Ravens in their home opener, and they mean business. Terrell Suggs sacking Tommy Maddox, Ravens defense. Now, they know that Pittsburgh has beaten them six of the last eight, but boy, Baltimore brought the D. Maddox pressured again by Suggs, intentional grounding. Maddox fiery. I don't know that I would take on the Ravens in this house. Of course, Bill Cowher hates the call of intentional grounding, and he's going to show it right on his face. Meanwhile, second quarter, Ravens really controlled the ball in this game, too. Uh, and also territorially, Deion Sanders, Brad, 23 yards, time. Return, but, but minus 15 for taking off the helmet. That they, didn't have, they didn't have that rule when last time, five times. So saw him that eight yard return, Deion. Third and seven over the 19 for Pittsburgh, and Maddox throwing a plexical burst, and Brad time gets over, mm -hmm. leaves the game with a hamstring injury, would not return, but made the play there. So it's 13-0 Baltimore time of possession. Kept Pittsburgh in their own zone. Gary Baxter rustles in, hits Maddox on the arm. It's a fumble. Suggs recovers, returns to the one, and Maddox injured right elbow. Uh, he's out at least a week, and so that means Roethlisberger, who played, will be the starter next week. Meanwhile, down at the one, Jamal Lewis, <laughs> one-yard run, 20 to nothing Ravens. Now Roethlisberger threw a couple of touchdown passes. Gave Pittsburgh hope. But in the end, this one looked like a different route run, and Chris McAllister made them jump off the Tallahatchie Bridge. 51 yards, gets over Roethlisberger at the end zone. McAllister with a big play for that defense, and the Ravens, quote, a 30-13 win over the Pittsburgh Steelers as uh, the Maddox has struggled and left. So Baltimore, you know what, their defense set the tone. And boy, they were suffocating. It. Yeah, and, and this is the way that they're going to win football games. I think they have to depend on the D. You look at those numbers for Kyle Bowler, 10 of 18 for 98 yards. You're going to win most of your games on the defensive side of the ball. Even though Lewis had only 62, each team is 1-1. One one. Meanwhile, both teams, one of these games between 1-0 and o teams, four of them we had, the Rams and the Falcons. Mike Vick and the Falcons. Well, the Rams have beaten the Falcons seven straight times. Mike 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 has been a big reason why. Second quarter, Falcons lead 7-0, and they need business. Watch Mike Vick. To the 15, the 10, the 5. What? Wow! 14-yard gain. Jeremy Drew's butler flips him, Tom. Yeah, and take another look at it. We talked about what Mike Vick should and shouldn't do. He only knows one way to play football, and he's playing it all out. He's going to do whatever he can to help his team win. Warwick Dunn with a nice cut. Two-yard run, swimming into the end zone. 14-0 Falcons. Jim Morris' team looking to go up on Mike Marshall's team even more. Fourth down, Rams. Falk on the carry, and he's wide open for the touchdown. Back to back to back to 14-7 now in the second quarter. Vick, now watch this series of plays. Vic taking over in his own 26-yard line, eventually. Talk about an athlete, well, this is what we missed last year. Whoop, there's nobody open, and whoop, whoop, the first down of the I want more, and then ah, I get out of bounds so I don't get hit. 20-yard gain, then on the 50, watch this, Tommy, and whoop, 14-yard gain. And then I, I feel like another run in me, and then whoop, and then the jitterbug, and then the outside, the bounce it outside, get a block, cut it in. 18 yards, sets up a field goal, 17-7. Yeah, you just watch the way he destroys the angles when he's going down the field. He's the most dangerous player, I believe, to ever play quarterback in terms of his ability to scramble and make things happen out of the pocket. Third quarter, the Rams down 10, trying to respond. Mark Bolger, who is only 5-4 and four on the road, as much success as the Rams have had. Torrey Holton, watch this, speaking about... <laughs> I don't know if this is Mo, Larry, Curley, or Shep. 17-14. Now, Vic tries to move. Doesn't quite get the first down on third and eight. Next play from the three. Warwick Dunn gets the first down and the touchdown. 24-17. Atlanta back in. And then the defense took over. Mark Boulder. Da -da 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 -da. Did it, did it, did it. I only could avoid the sack. Patrick Kearney down at the one. And then, Bolger. If I only could keep the ball in my hand. And win. In the end, no! Oh, touchdown! Brady Smith! Touchdown! Mike Marsh actually threw the, the uh, challenge play. Is it Mike? Uh, the ball, ball down hit the ground. Yeah, so don't bother. 31 17, the Falcons believe they go on to have a field goal. 34 17, Hotlanta. 
four to 16 yards. Hello for Atlanta Vic. 109 yards running, 179 more throwing. Atlanta also had five sacks. And, and the key number I look at is you look at that graphic right there. Marshall fought 12 carries for 20 yards oh. and a touchdown. You'll be in trouble every time you see that. Number. Well, and with Vic running for 100 yards, now this young man has played only 30 games, but already he has 300 yard rushing games as a quarterback. Only the ageless one, Billy Kilmer. Not really in his Redskins days, those are the 49ers, mm -hmm. million dollar backfield days. Had four of them, some great names on here, obviously Donovan McNabb, Tobin Rote, the old Lion and Charger, Bobby Douglas, the old Bear, and Randall Cunningham, who was uh, certainly mercurial in his own right, but Vic on a pretty interesting list. Now, the Colts played that great game on the opening Thursday only to lose at New England because they couldn't convert inside the five, inside even the one yard line. They were playing at Tennessee with the danger of going two down to a very formidable team, the Tennessee Titans, in their division. Here we go with our prime cut. It's a tough opening schedule for Indianapolis, and Tennessee coming in 1-0. They were ready in a battle of co-MVPs. Now, Indy won both games last year between these two as Peyton Manning finally shed that albatross. Chris Brown, not hitting George this year, and he's a dimension that they didn't have last year. 20 yards bounces an outside seven of the Titans. Yeah, and, and watch the rookie Jacob Bell going to come across and make a great block, but this kid has great vision, Chris Brown. Sees the cutback lane, got that high knee action, reminds me of Eric Dickerson a little bit. You don't want to run too high because you take a lot of shots, but he has great acceleration. That's, that's an outstanding run. Back in the saddle, the most points, the most field goals, Gary Anderson, a 39-yard field goal like he never left 10 to 3 Titans but later in the second Marvin Harrison coughs up the ball Samari shape rattle and roll Colts only three points in the first half but Tennessee had a chance to really bury the Colts but in the second half it was the Colts that said not so fast Peyton Manning to Reggie Wayne stately Wayne Manor out of the back game touchdown we're tied at 10 now Chris Brown running hard down to the five, down to the one yard line. Sets up McNair with a sneak, so Tennessee back on top, 17-10. Colts, play action late third. Manning, Reggie Wayne, oh, he couldn't keep his feet, it's still 44 yards. Oh, we had a touchdown, but no worry. Edger and James, Woo. certainly hanging out of the ball here, bouncing. 22 yards down to the two. And then they switch ends, first play of the fourth quarter. How about this play action? Beautiful. Marcus Pollard wide open. The game is tied at 17. Then turning point in the game. Fourth and two tight. Inside the 30. Derek Mason open. But Nick Harper steals the ball for the Colts. This is the most difficult of interceptions. Nick Harper didn't look back. He read Mason's eyes to figure out where the ball was. Made a great interception. And then Manning says thank you, Nick, to Marvin Harrison. 34 yards, great concentration as we see it again. Ball thrown to the outside oh. shoulder, defender can't get to it. Great job of getting your feet in bounds, Marvin. Okay, now inside the five, Edger and hold on, no problem. Edger and James, touchdown, 24-17 the Colts. Tennessee punting, fourth and ten under five to go. Little trickery, Hendrick complete, but this no, not far enough for the first down. The Titans were 0-3 on fourth down gambles, Tom. And Edger and James then bounces outside and look at him go. Into the end zone, 30 yards, the 100% healthy Edger and James. Absolutely. And the Indianapolis Colts stare 0-2 in the face, come back to beat the Titans in Tennessee. 31-17, remember last year, uh, Tennessee lost only one game in their home stadium, and that was to the Indianapolis Colts, who all of a sudden have their number. And I would say in this game, a couple things we didn't show you there. Tennessee went for it the way Chris yes. Brown was running for it in yes. the first half. Uh, they went for it on fourth, fourth down. down inside the five, uh, and the Colts' defense, that they had a chance to bury the Colts. The Colts resilient, yes. and then they looked like a championship team again, this time they had a win to show you, for. You use the right word. Uh, you think all the way back to last year in the Tampa Bay Buccaneer game, scoring those touchdowns right. at the end of that football game coming back. Uh, it's all about mentality, and I think that Tony Dungy has convinced this football team we are never out of a game. We've got a lot of weapons. This is going to help us defensively, and they're going to be a team to be reckoned with all the way through the season. Here's a stat you won't look at. In the rushing department, Manning 5, McNair 2. 
So, well, that didn't even That'd be the only time that happens. Right? <laughs> even out resting that big win for the Colts is both are one and one. Big story from Oakland. Jerry Rice, the incomparable one, will explain. Welcome back to NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. Sunday Night Football on ESPN, all excitement in Cincinnati as Carson Palmer makes his home debut as a starter at quarterback. Into town to play the Bengals, the Miami Dolphins, Linda Cohn with the highlights. ESPN Sunday Night Football. Bengals trying to beat the Dolphins for the first time since 1977, a span of nine losses. A.J. Feely getting the start for Jay Fiedler. Feely sacked. Dolphins with just 226 total yards of offense. Randy McMichael disgusted. He needs to talk with Dr. Phil right away. Still 13-3. to <laughs> Bengals. That guy's a fraud. First and goal for the Dolphins. Feely finding Chris Chambers. 21-39 to for 218 yards. One touchdown, two picks for Feely. He's not the fraud. Dr. Phil's I the fraud. I understand. Right, Miami point. scored 10 points in the fourth to tie it up. Bengals with a chance to win. Shane Graham from 39 yards away. Yes. Carson Palmer made it happen. That's right, 7 for 8 for 53 yards in the final drive with under 2 minutes left. And don't miss Sunday Night Football next week, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. It's the John Gruden Bowl, Fox at Raiders, preceded by NFL Primetime and followed by SportsCenter. Pair of teams that are 1-0 going into game number two, the Jets and the Chargers facing off at the Merck. Curtis, my favorite mock, off his 196 yards last week against the Bengals, get two here, and the Jets lead it 14 0. Herms, Herms got a different club this year. Now it's 17 0, and Tim Dwight back. And you think, you think he's fast, Tom? Whoop! And then, whoop! And then he could go all the way. 87 yards. Chargers on the board at 17 7. But it's 27 7, the Jets. Until the Danian Tomlinson. Four yard run, 27 14. Now 27 21. Chad Pennington. I just like his accuracy. Santana Moss gets bumped, but still catches it 48 yards. Sets up a Chris Baker touchdown, 34 21. Jets. Doug Flutie in. The ageless one. Subbing for Breeze. Flutie. You know he's going to fleet one. <laughs> to Eric Parker, who pens the first down. That sets up. And you know he's going to do this, and oh, he can still move. Get under that, Dougie. Six yards, 34-28. Chargers, you know the onside kick's coming. And with the good hands, it's Wayne Krippet. Good to see him out there if this is the right thing. It's just contributing to the Jets. And Herm Edwards and the Jets are 34-28 winners. And we should say this. Now, Curtis Martin, another 100-yard game, 119 yards, passes Freeman McNeil as the all-time rusher in Jets history. So congratulations to Curtis, who looks awfully strong. Yeah, and you talk to Coach Herm Edwards, and he's always going to tell you, this is the guy that makes the offense go. He's making it go. Pennington, 22 of 29, no pick, 258. Jerry Rice and the Raiders, hoping to uh, get on the winning ways, playing the Buffalo Bills, hosting them in Oakland for the first time since 1977. Stabler against Ferguson. Meanwhile, we're in a number of the Snake Ridge Cannon and complete the Jerry Rice second quarter. Rice, wait a minute now, did not make a catch. His first time without a catch after 274 straight games. Drew Bledsoe sacked in a 10-3 game by Tyler Brayton. Seven sacks of Bledsoe today on this day. And meanwhile, the Bills moving as Bledsoe, 65 to Lee F. Bledsoe, finally, the Bills who have trouble scoring gets it to Eric Moles. And Moles sheet with great concentration here. Yeah, ball that was tipped, Moles managed to grab it with one hand back in the end zone and still get both feet, knees, hips down in the end zone for the score. And then the onside kick, and the Raiders grab it. And the Bills, another defensive effort, strong, but lose another 13-10 game, and the Raiders, now they get it done. But the big news in this game is that Jerry Rice did not catch a pass 
for the first time since his rookie year of 1985, quarterback Rich Gannon after the game. I wish I would have known the situation, uh, but um, knowing Jerry like I know him, I think that, you know, I don't think he would have wanted just someone to throw him a ball if that was the situation. We're trying to get everybody involved. I don't know that Doug Gabriel had many catches today or Ronald Curry had the one, but, um, we, we, you know, we didn't, uh, couldn't get a whole lot going after that first quarter, you know, and so, um, but knowing Jerry like I do, I'm sure he'll start another streak. And So 20 years, 274. Next, by the way, on the list is Art Monk at 183. Mm -hmm. An amazing run ends, but... Uh, and that's what it is. I think it's been a great run, a marvelous run for Jerry Rice. But, you know, we know that now you're, uh, I like to say, headed toward the 18th green. And, and so when you see this, a game where you play and he completes passes to seven different receivers, you're not involved. I think that Jerry understands that, you know, it's been a great streak, but it certainly signals that we are now headed toward you know, probably the end of his career, toward the end of his career. Well, you're not going to end in the middle of the season. But no, 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 that. no. But, but, but certainly, you know, if I played in a football game and I didn't make a single tackle, you know, I would sit back and go, boy, you know, well, what's my contribution? Well, uh, Jerry feels right. But the Raiders won. They, they won the game. They beat the Bills 13-10. to 10. When we return on this edition of NFL Primetime, the champion Patriots, and it was good that the Patriots were playing in Arizona. We'll certainly will explain that. Uh, the only time you're going to see the Patriots for 24 days. It's odd. And Sean Alexander. Will the Seahawks win another game on the road? One last week. Chevrolet Fantasy Ticker is brought to you by the new Chevrolets. Ten new cars and trucks in 20 months. An American Revolution. Patriots at the Cardinals, and every player in the NFL wearing the decal of number 40. Pat Tillman, his number retired today. Arizona will wear that on their helmets all year long. Tom Brady, Daniel Graham, two yards. Patriots lead it 7 0 in the first. Josh Tears of McCown throws it deep, but overthrows, and Eugene Wilson, second year DB of the Patriots, is there to make the pick late in the first quarter. Young quarterback trying to get the ball to Larry Fitzgerald. As you watch him throw, look at the Patriots close. There's absolutely no way you're going to be able to stick this ball in. The Patriots, as usual, make a great play on the football. Now Tom Brady with the pass. To Graham again for a touchdown to the Patriots. 19 yards, lead at 14-0. But halftime, Pat Tillman. Honored. Mom. Family. Honored forever by the NFL, the NFLPA, the Pat Tillman Foundation, and I think a lot of the players around the league will want to wear that number 40 on their helmets no matter what team they're on. Emmett Smith down 17-6, punches it in for the touchdown. They go for two and miss it at 17-12. And in the fourth, Arizona still game down eight. McCown to Fitzgerald, picked off by Wilson again. New England gets a Vinatieri field goal, and they go on to win this game in an emotional day in Arizona. 23 to 12, Tom Brady picked off twice by Arizona, so that's one of his greatest days. Patriots going into a bye, they had 10 days off after the Colt game, now they have a game, they've now won, oh, by the way, 17 in a row, now they have a bye, then they host Buffalo in two weeks to try to tie the record of 18 straight. Uh, the Patriots beat the Cardinals. Seahawks Bucks. Seahawks won on the road last week in New Orleans, could they win at Tampa Bay's home opener? Field goal early, Seahawks, they lead 3-0. Matt Hasselbeck. Pump fake, freezes the D, Corin Robinson open, 10 0 Seahawks. Has the back just. Well, he's the, been a pro the, bowler, the, but the, the stop, go, the fade, he's throwing all the routes now. He understands how to get people open and how to help them get open. John Gruden pulled Brad Johnson and the lefty, son of Phil, young Chris Sims, always fumbles the snap on third and goal from the one. They settle for a field goal. Bucks down 10 6 in the fourth. Sims. Hit by Tiki O'Keefer, and but called for roughing the passer. So, Tampa Bay still in business here after the two-minute warning. Sims, incomplete, but Grant Wistrom, Whoa. who's covering, <laughs> look at Grant downfield, but he gets called for pass interference. Next play, Marcus Trufant with the pick, but roughing the passer is called. So amazingly, Tampa Bay's drive stays alive.
He's called for hitting late. He called, he called not only for hitting late, but for hitting down around the knees. The referees are paying attention to where he hit the quarterback. But this time, Michael Bouya, Michael Bulwer makes the pick. One of their drop draft picks. They go to the booth, and then wait a minute now. Sims knee down before he throws, but they don't overturn it. No. I mean, how many times can I, you know? That's all right. They got their share already. They got their share. <laughs> the Seahawks win it. Certainly not the most artistic game, but Seattle, a team that was two and seven on the road last year, has four of these back-to-back -back road games this year, and they've won the first set. They are two and zero with road wins. Their home opener coming up, and Tampa begins at zero and two. Maybe a change in the helm. Browns, Cowboys. Cleveland a surprise winner last week, so Dallas taking no chances. Flea flicker to Keyshawn Johnson from Vinny, 36-yard gain. And that sets up a little toss to Jeff Robinson, 7 nothing. How about that, Cowboy? Third down, Dallas, second quarter. Terry Glenn with the catch. He's hit late by Earl Little. And meanwhile, Keyshawn comes running right into the don't hit late. Well, he hit a defenseless receiver, whether yep. he was down or not, and Keyshawn came in to defend his teammate. And I completely understand that. But Bill says, Keyshawn, look, they well, he already got the, want the flag. He doesn't want the penalties. He got the flag. But, but sometimes the emotional edge is, is where you want to defend your teammates. Seven and a half minutes to go. Dallas looking to put it away. But Robert Griffith in a 17-12 game makes the pick. Then he threw three picks in the second half. He didn't look strong at all. Brown, second and eight. Jeff Garcia. This one's picked off by Terrence Newman. Garcia picked off three times. Then, later in the fourth, Garcia trying to make something happen. Oh, nice effort, but out of bounds to Kellen Winslow, but Black holding in the end zone. 19-12, they try the outside kick. Anthony Henry gets the ball for Cleveland. They actually have a shot. Admittedly, not much of one. McCown, the younger McCown, comes in. Luke McCown, he can throw it farther than Garcia. So it's a five-yard penalty, Dallas. He could reach the end zone. But look who's back playing. What do you do, Tom? Knock it out! Even Keyshawn Johnson knows that. And so, the Cowboys win it 19-12. So they and the Browns each one and one on the year. Garcia really struggled, eight of 27. Then he threw for 300. But as we said, both were picked off three times. And we saw young Julius Jones from Notre Dame run a little bit for Dallas in this game. Yeah, we saw him fumble, and we saw him not carry the ball very much after he fumbled. I think that's a sign as well. When we return, our prime time players. Tom and I will wrap up a wacky week two. NFL Prime Time, what? What? presented by Miller Lite. Grab yourself a great tasting low carb Miller Lite. And in part by Lowe's, where you'll find all your home improvement needs. Lowe's, improving home improvement. Boomer, my prime time performer. First year in the league, rookie Roy Williams. Caught four passes today, two of them, half of them for touchdowns, 73 yards. And the thing that's most impressive, he makes it all look pretty effortless. He's a big guy, got a long stride, deceptively fast. My primetime player's got to be Mike Brown. Remember a couple of years ago when the Bears won the Central? He had big play after big play after big play. 95 yards, almost breaking a record that stood since 1923. George Hallis' club record of a 98-yard fumble return against the Oorang Indians. You rang? You rang. <laughs> we rang. Thanks for watching NFL Primetime. I'm Chris Berman for Tom Jackson.